So let's discuss how to set up your first campaign. Before you even get started with campaign setup, it's important to think about your goals. Be as specific as possible. Are you looking for conversions, new users, brand awareness, pages per session, or something else? Really think about what you want out of your campaign, because the more that you focus on this, the more likely it is that you'll be successful. Backstage is Taboola's user-friendly campaign management dashboard. This dashboard provides full transparency into your campaign's performance across the Taboola network, allowing you to filter by various data points at any time. With real-time performance insights and advanced A-B testing capabilities, you can focus on optimizing campaigns based on your specific goals. Here you can see the link to log into Backstage and you'll, you'll come into the campaign summary screen. I'll now show you the steps to create a campaign. The first thing you need to do is go to campaign management here on the left and then you click on the new campaign button. Then you'll be brought to this screen. The first thing you need to do is give the campaign a name. This is just for you, it's internal only and users will not see it. So you can make it meaningful to yourself. You can add in things like the geo, the device, or anything else you're targeting to make it easier for you to differentiate between the different campaigns you have running. Then you can select the time frame. You can leave the end date open if it's going to be an ongoing campaign or select a date if it's time limited. You can also see here that you need to add a branding text. If the branding text is important to let the user know what they'll be landing on, uh, sorry, that is why the branding text is important. So there's a few different ways that you can write this. If you're a publisher or a brand, this will be your company name or website. If you're promoting earned media, you would include the name of the publisher. For example, if you are Bank of America and Bloomberg writes an article about you, it would be Bank of America by Bloomberg. If you're an affiliate marketer, you would use the name of the end product. And if you're a performance marketer, you would use your product um, or company name. Next, you can set up the geo-targeting. You can target by specific country, or you can be more specific and target regions within countries. You can also block specific regions that you don't want to target. So if you want to target the UK but not London, you can exclude it. In the US, we can also be more specific and target by DMA. So that gives you a lot of scope to be quite targeted in different countries. Then you can set up your platform targeting. You can choose just one or all of them. We have desktop, tablet, and smartphone. Some clients would split campaigns into three different campaigns based on performance. So you could have one for desktop, one for tablet, and one for smartphone, for example. Or if you've got a mobile-specific campaign, like mobile app downloads, for example, then you can just target smartphone. Let's talk about bidding and budget. Here you can add the CPC, the cost per click. And this is how much you will pay per click. The CPC that you start with will depend on your content. It varies depending on exactly what you're going to upload, but I'd say as a general guideline, you want to start with 40 to 60 cents if you're a performance marketer, and for arbitrage and publishers, it can be from 10 to 35 cents. For the spending limit or the budget, you add in how much you want to spend. There's a couple of different options with the budget. You have monthly flight and entire campaign. With monthly flight, the budget will reset itself automatically at the, on the first of every month. So only use that option if you're going to have an ongoing campaign. For entire campaign, the campaign will stop running once it fulfills the budget that you've entered. If you want to keep on running, then you just need to add more budget. There's also some different types of ad delivery. We've got balanced, accelerated, and strict. I'd recommend that you start with balanced pacing, as our system will pace the spend for you over the campaign period. If you have a set amount that you want to spend per day, then use the strict option, because this allows you to set a daily cap. And if you have a sale or an item that you want to promote really quickly over a short space of time, then use the accelerated option. 
this means that you'll spend as fast as possible. Tracking parameters allow you to pass back data to Google Analytics or any other tracking dashboard that you might use. Here's a selection of UTM parameters that you can use. We always have two that are there by default that you can see at the top here. The source is Taboola and the medium is Referral. In addition to that, you can add any of these. One that's really popular with our clients is Site Passback, the first one here on the list. The first one here on the list. This will help you with optimization later on because what it will do is pass back all of the sites into Google Analytics. So you can see for each site what the stats were. You can see, for example, the, the bounce rate and the time on site. And that means you can then increase bids on specific sites where you had good results or decrease the bids if they weren't quite up to, um, up to what you wanted. Once you've set up all of these basics, you'll add content to your campaign that you want to promote. You simply add your URLs into this box here and then click Add. You can add the URL multiple times by clicking Enter to go to the next line and adding it again and again. This will help you to do it in bulk and save time. Our system will pull headlines and images from your landing page, but we recommend that you update these with your own images and some headlines. It's a good idea to try a few combinations at the beginning of the campaign to allow for some A-B testing. I would recommend at least two images and three headlines so that you have six combinations to start off with. And that's it. Once you've uploaded the content, the campaign is ready to go for review. If at a later stage you want to add more content or try new creatives, you can go back to campaign management and click on the campaign inventory button that you can see here. And it will bring you back to that same screen to add more URLs. In order to change the headlines and images, you simply click on them and you'll see this yellow box comes up and you can edit them in line as you can see here. Once your campaign is running, you can edit the settings at any time. All of these controls are in the campaign management tab. You can edit the campaign name, time frame, targeting, bidding, budget and tracking. You just go to campaign management and click the pencil icon for the campaign that you'd like to edit. And then there's a few items that you can edit in line, like the CPC budget and flight dates. To edit any campaign items, you can edit the inventory as I explained before. Once your campaign has been submitted, our content review team will take up to one business day to review content and set it live. Please only upload a campaign when you're ready for it to go live because it will go live as soon as it's approved, unless you've set a specific start date at some point in the future. Let's talk about tracking. We can provide you with pixels to track conversions. In Backstage, go to Pixel Management on the left, and then click Add Pixel. If you want to track conversions, like a sale, email capture, ebook download, etc., then choose conversion. You can name it anything you like. We suggest calling it conversion and leave the other boxes blank. When you go to the next page, you'll get the code. You'll have a JavaScript and an image tag to choose from. Implement this code on your thank you page in the header. There's further instructions on how to do this in our Help Center online. We can also track page views. This is more useful for arbitrages and publishers who are interested in tracking page views to help them generate revenue through ad impressions. In this case, go to Pixel Management again, but this time choose the Page View Pixel, pixel option instead. You have to name this one page views, written like this, page underscore views. The code will need to go on all pages of your website within the header. I'd like to dive into a few of the reports that we have in Backstage. When you go to the campaign summary on the left, there's a few different things you'll see. The first one is the time report or the by day report. 
Here you can see an overview of all of your stats for each day of the campaign. You'll see things like your impressions, CTR, clicks, CPC, conversions and actions and CPA and how much you've spent in each day. You can also see in the top right you can change the date range depending on the data you want to see and you can also select specific campaigns so just below campaign summary you'll see it says all campaigns but if you click that there's a drop down and you can see the stats for a specific campaign instead. Then you have by provider so when you have an agency account you'll have a network and within that you can have all of your clients so you can compare each one or just see an overview of the stats for each of your different clients. Then you have the by campaign report, so for, for a particular client, if you've got say five campaigns running, you can compare them here. It's helpful if you want to split them between different languages or different devices and see how they compare to each other. Then you have the by site report. We're very transparent and show you all of the sites that you've been showing on. So like I mentioned before, you have site passback, which allows you to optimize here and see the sites that you've been running on that you can uh, you can optimize them so you can bid more aggressively on some that work well you can bid less on some that don't work well and there's an option to block as well if you um, if you completely don't want to show on a particular site then you've got by platform so you might have one campaign that's across all three platforms and you can compare the performance or you might have different um, you might have different campaigns for each of the devices already. Um, so this is helpful to, for you to know what kind of budget to put for each one, and you might want to adjust CPCs accordingly as well. Then we also have the top campaign content report, which you'll see on the left of Backstage. What this does is shows you a comparison of all of the items that you have in your campaign and which ones are working the best. So I mentioned before that it's good to have six combinations of items to start with, so three different headlines, two different images, and what this will do is show you all of them, and it's likely that one or two will probably have got the most clicks out of everything, and then you'll see some have got less traction. So this will help you to then optimize in terms of creatives. If you see that one image is working really well, you can try that one with some different headlines, or if one headline's doing really well, you can try that with some new images. So this is a really good place to come and look when you are doing your optimization. So we have a few advanced targeting features that we'll cover now. Firstly, we have retargeting. Retargeting is a great tool that you can use with Taboola. I'm sure you use this on other platforms too. A potential visitor may visit your site, but then they leave without taking an action. The same person might be on another site and will see your second retargeting ad in the Taboola widget. When they click, they're back on your site and you can target them with a more aggressive and direct landing page. To set this up, we have a pixel that you can use, which again you can find in pixel management. You can choose the retargeting option and implement this on any pages where you want to retarget. Please note that once you set up a campaign like this, there's some configuration that we need to do on our end, so please discuss this with your Taboola rep before setting it up to ensure that it's all done correctly. We also have contextual targeting. This allows you to pick the type of site that you'll show on based on its category. We recommend that you start with a run of network campaign and then set up a separate campaign with a higher CPC targeting one or a few specific contexts to test if you can get more scale there based on the kind of users that you have. Again, you'll need to talk to your Taboola rep before setting this up and using this feature. Audience targeting is an advanced option where we use data from some third parties to help us to be more specific with who you target. This can be both B2B or B2C. And you can discuss this on a case-by-case -case basis with your contact person at Taboola. I'll briefly cover our content guidelines, which you can find on our help center with a lot more detail. When content is uploaded, our content review team reviews it before going live. It's then classified into different categories to help our publishers to select what kind of content they want running on their sites. The content will fall under premium and non-premium. All publishers will accept premium content, but they'll not all accept the non-premium stuff. 
So the more family safe your content is, the more chance it will have to scale on our network. Let's start with what's not allowed. We can't run anything that's sexually suggestive, misleading, rude, harmful to children, photoshopped, or anything related to weapons. You can see a selection of images here that we don't allow. I'll just leave that up for a few seconds so you can take it in. This is an example of what we would class as non-premium content. So we run this, but it's just classed as non-premium. It includes mean-spirited gossip, anything about celebrities which is negative, unflattering pictures, anything with red circles and arrows drawn onto the images, anything that exploits insecurities like weight loss and anti-aging, and anything that's mildly suggestive. So again, here's a few examples of the kind of things we would class in this category. And finally, here's an example of premium content. You can see that it's not offensive or controversial in any way. It's the type of content that you could happily show your grandma. All the images are family safe and the headlines too. So now you know the basics of setting up a campaign on Taboola. I'll pass it back to Jonathan. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Lena, for that. Um, and we have um, one uh, question from the audience um, asking, can we block our ads from showing on certain publishers? Yes, absolutely. So when I was talking about those reports in the campaign summary tab, you can look at the Buy Site tab and you'll see everything that you've been showing on. From there, you can block sites. There's a little red button to the right of all of the sites. So you can block them if you don't want to show there. But we do also have this cool feature called CPC by Publisher where you can adjust the bids by up to 50% either way. So if something is working really well for you, say you're within your CPA goal and you're getting good scale and you want to get more, you can increase the bid on that particular site by up to 50%. And again, if you're on a site and your CPA is maybe a little bit too high, you can, instead of blocking it, you can decrease the bid by up to 50%. So we've got loads of bidding options and also blocking options. 